So I want to talk about prayer, our prayer life. I talked about this in the book a little bit, but let me just hit this a little bit in this video. Um, majority of my personal prayer is in my imagination. It's in my feelings. It's in my emotions. And what I do is I'm just experiencing God, right? Like there's, I always say like this, there's like three levels of knowing God. There's one level of knowing God where it's like, it's like into your house. Okay. So your house is like your body, so to speak, right? And you got the husband and wife that's in the house, or you got you and Jesus that's in the house. And God is, you know, God is the presence. You are in the house and you are the presence. It's your house. You have the key to that house. You have the ownership of the house. The house, the body is yours. Why? It's because you dwell in it, right? Well, it's like in, for me and my wife, for example, in our home, this is what it looks like in knowing and growing and how I live my prayer life, you know? You know, when I sit down and have dinner for my wife and I say, hey, how was your day? And she was like, oh, my day was great. I did this. I did that. Oh, wow. That's one level of knowing, right? Where I know her. I know about her day. I know what's going on. And then there's another level of knowing. Like maybe we sit down and we watch a real cool uh, flick on TV and we watch a movie and we cuddle and we eat popcorn and we snuggle you know, and you rub your feet and, you know, you're just getting them little touchy feelies and you're just enjoying each other's presence, right? And you're, you're, you're experiencing and encountering that and that feels really good inside and it makes you feel good to have those experiences, right? And those intimate times together and experiencing things together, you know, and, and this is the way I see our prayer life is like this is when we get together and we talk, right? You know, I'm talking about the things that maybe I, I've learned in the Bible, things I've discovered in my life with God. And I'm saying, God, what does this look like to you? How does this work? You know, what, what did you look, what did you feel like on that day when this happened to you and you were going through this, you know? And I'm talking and I'm getting to know him. But then there's that time of prayer where I'm in the place to where I'm, I'm just meditating, I'm soaking in what he's saying, I have this dialogue going, he's speaking back to me, I'm experiencing what he's telling me about the questions I'm asking. But then there's another level that I left out here. There's a level of prayer where it's the secret place. I like to think of about like this, you know. When I'm eating dinner with my wife, that's one level of God's presence. When I'm watching a movie and we get close, intimate, we get that touchy feely, and we're just enjoying each other, right? And watching a movie together and talking and that kind of thing, that's another level of knowing and presence. And then when we go into our chambers, our secret chambers, and we make love in there, right? That level of experience isn't like eating dinner and watching a movie. They, they, they're not like each other, <laughs> like totally different experience, totally different reality. You know, all of your knowing and all your experiences and everything for a moment in time has had a clash where your flesh and the heights of the senses of your flesh and your spirit, it's coming into a kiss of agreement where this just this magical moment of ecstasy, right? That happens. Well, this is how I've discovered to live out my prayer life is I live in this place, you know? So I will often, many times I'll talk to God in my prayer life about what I'm reading. Like I'll read a scripture, I'll meditate on the scripture, I'll think about the scripture, I'll talk to him about the scripture. Mm -hmm. Then there's the time and place where I just soak in it and I just listen to him. He might give me scriptures, I might write them down. I might just, just have a time of just, you know, just resonating in it. Mm -hmm. And then there's that deep, intimate place I get into with the Lord, where we're super intimate, right? Where my whole body is just in, engulfed mm -hmm in a bliss with him in my prayer life and I, and, and I get lost in him, so to speak, right? And, and it's not that I lose, uh, you know, the essence of my reference point. It's that I'm experiencing my reference point and the fullness of its ecstasy, right? And so that's kind of how I, I, you know, different levels that I pray in. Here's another thing that I often do in my prayer life too. I just wanted to give you that experience you know, is um, in the process of knowing God and discovering God, I gave you guys the tips already and other ones where you walk through your five senses, you talk, you ask him, how do you feel? How do you think? How do you see? How do you hear? 
you know, you know, what is your emotion in that? And you learn to dialogue, you learn to get journaling going on. If you're super serious, guys, you hear me repeat myself on this journal, 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 journal. I, 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 if you're serious about hearing the voice of God, I guarantee you will have no problem hearing the voice of God. If you commit one year to journaling with God, no questions asked, it'll be game over for you. Okay, you'll hear God like a snap of a hat. No questions asked, because you'll get down the voice. You'll know the voice, right? But here, here's another thing that I do is a lot of times, if you guys ever got in your prayer life and your prayer time and, and your mind be all over the place and like it's over here, it's over there, it's thinking about kids, thinking about bills. I often say this, you know, God is the God of our imagination, our mind. When your mind wanders like that, you know, begin to take them thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ and talk to them about those thoughts, right? Engage those thoughts, you know, and, and remember those thoughts are coming to you because he wants to talk to you about them, right? So engage him in your thoughts, engage him in your feelings. If you, if your boss made you feel a certain way, engage him in that, discover his feeling in that. Right? This is where you're having that cool conversation like from dinner time and now you're, you're watching that movie and now you're experiencing this conversation together, right? And then, and then what happens is, is when you get settled in it, it's going to be that ecstasy. It's going to be that place of like in your secret place to where, you know, when you're in your chambers and your body comes to peace and it comes to excitement, it comes to a bliss because it becomes settled in truth, right? So I just wanna encourage you in your prayer life, you know, there's different stages of it, there's different realities, it might look different for you, I'm just giving you my perspective of it, you know, but I do engage my mind, my imagination, my feelings. Uh, I believe wholeheartedly, if you leave your flesh, your feelings, your emotions, your senses, your mind out of your prayer life, you're just asking things to become a hot mess because listen you're not meant to get self out of the way right yourself is in christ it's no longer i who live but it's christ who lives in me who is me it's christ okay so if i'm seeing myself any way shape or form outside of christ i'm creating a false idol okay there's none of that my flesh is his flesh my bone is his bone my mind is his mind so i'm gauging all parts of me in him to discover him and me and me and him that I, I create this magical union between the flesh and the spirit there's a magical union between the two right and this magical union brings a kiss of a bliss and there's such a peace and ecstasy when flesh and spirit come to a kiss of agreement right because you're no longer flesh after the dead old man you're flesh after the flesh of Jesus, the instrument of righteousness, right? So that's what prayer life does to me. It brings my flesh and my spirit into one reality where it communicates, where it becomes one perspective. I always look at God being the head of my body and my body being like the we're the body of Christ and Christ is the head. So, you know, the, the body always comes and submits to the head, right? It talks, it communicates, it fellowships. And when the head and the body have good communion together there's there's a there's a mental you know freedom there's a physical emotional freedom and the whole body has an experience because it's in union with the spirit of god in it right so this is what prayer life does for me it allows me to come into that reality and how do i do it is i don't leave any part of my self out i don't try to say oh i'm leaving out i'm only going by my heart not my mind i'm i'm cutting out my flesh I'm only doing the spirit listen if you do that, you're going to create a hot mess in your life. You're going to create confusion because Christ come to put you together, not separate and divide you.